Welcome back to the Student Hub Live event. Well, in this reorientation event for students studying STEM, we're going to take a look at what I wish I knew before I started studying from an AL perspective. Now, ALs are commonly known as tutors, and I'm joined by two fabulous guests. I've got Vic Nicholas and Nigel Gibson. Now, you've both been doing a lot of tutoring or associate lecturer work as well, but you've also got other roles at the university as well. So, Vic, you're one of our associate deans, um, and Nigel, you're a staff tutor, which yeah. means that you oversee a lot of associate lecturers. But here today, we're going to talk about ALs and the important role that tutors have to students' learning experiences. Yeah. It's easy, but, isn't it? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> what, 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 for, for our new students, because we've got a lot of students at level one here, they're all sort of super nervous and excited. Some may or may not have been allocated their tutor's details. Some may or may not have been in contact with their tutors right now. Um, but communicating with your tutor, we know, is really, really important. It's contact the tutor, talk to the tutor, but the important bit is relax. Yeah. We're, we will look after you. We're a machine that will help you to get from being a nervous undergraduate to a graduate, that's what we do, we've done it for 50 years. But it's about trusting the tutor. One of the big issues that students have at the beginning is letting go of their first assignment. Because as adults, we don't like to be judged by somebody else. But I'm letting somebody I don't know, I might not have met, I might not have even spoken to on the phone. You might even be cleverer than you. Uh, most, of, <laughs> most of my students are. But, but, but we're asking, as students, we're asking another adult to look at our work. And for many of us, the last time that happened was at school, and we may have had a poor experience. So for students, it's quite difficult to let go of that because of this judgment thing. Trust your tutor. We're there to not worry about giving it a mark, but to actually start a dialogue to help students to develop the skills they need to survive a degree. I think one of the big things is to make sure that you get in touch with your tutor early on mm. because then that dialogue can start rolling. Mm. And any worries that students have, you can approach the tutor, the tutor's the first point of contact, so you can approach the tutor, you can start addressing those worries, and uh, the tutors are professional and able to deal with that, those worries. But the other thing, to, I think, to remember is that if you've been a student on another module before, not all tutors are the same. Mm. You know, Nigel and I are both tutors, we've probably got very different styles, but we've all got the same sort of consistency of um, sort of the baseline, but we've just got different personalities yeah. and different ways that we'll tackle things. That consistency is important because for a lot of students, they might think, oh, you're a really friendly tutor, maybe a bit harsh on certain things. Yeah. So you get different <laughs> tutors from, um, from different angles, but there's this consistency in terms of marking guides that yeah. we have to mark students' work. Although some tutors, because they all have busy lives and are often involved in other exciting projects and things, some may respond mainly by email or phone call, some may respond very quickly or slowly. So there are certain guidelines yeah. that students can expect, but tutors aren't sort of on call 24-7 for no. students. So how might they then manage that relationship and find out how best to communicate? So so most tutors will send an introductory email. Um, some might give students a, a ring, uh, some might send them a text, uh, but they'll, they'll normally be an introductory email and in that email it'll often say, oh, best to, if you're going to phone, phone at these hours yeah. or best to contact me by email or whatever. Um, and so that introductory email will sort of s set out how the student tutor relationship can develop mm. you know and in response to that is a good point or a good way of telling your tutor that i find it difficult to use the phone yeah. or i'm not comfortable using email yeah. or this works best for me can we do a sunday morning yeah. can we do that but again that dialogue that conversation because we can use adobe connect we can use any number of different technologies for getting in touch with people um, but starting that dialogue i fret if i've not heard from my students by this Saturday in my new group. They're in big trouble. I, 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 I will be sending out, I'll be sending out the dogs, finding them. I'm, so, you know, I'm ringing the police, I've got the helicopter up. No, it just, because I want to find out, particularly at level one, I want to find out how many of these people are connected. Yeah. Do they understand, you know, what we're doing and can we find a way of sucking them in? So I've already emailed them. Um, I have a spreadsheet, I think most of us do the spreadsheet of mm. when I've heard from them. Yeah. Once I've heard from them, that's fine, yeah, I'm yeah. comfortable. Yeah, but yeah. I fret otherwise, it's, yeah. look, I haven't heard from him, where's his house again? 
I'll drive round, I'll yeah. sit outside. <laughs> but, but it's, it's, yeah. No, no, don't do that. You've been told. Because <laughs> sometimes you can think, you know, people go through such immense consideration before starting an OU module. They'll know the assessment criteria, whether there's an exam, all that sort of essential stuff. But then it can be the simplest things like, do I have to go to Chelmsford on Saturday for a tutorial? Mm. Or, you know, those very simple things. And then you can feel a bit <coughs> stupid for maybe not knowing the answers to I some think, of those things. Yeah, I think one of the things that um, I very often say to students, particularly in the early weeks of a module is read the introductory guide yeah. on your module so you know on nearly all of the um, module websites there's an introduction to the to the module and it's very easy to look at that and go oh well, I'll, I'll read that later yeah, yeah. but it always contains really useful Essential information stuff, yeah. they've been they haven't been written carelessly they've really been crafted and so um, they contain lots and lots of useful information. So I think as a tutor, that's one of the things that I'd always say to students, um, contact your tutor, make that kind of connection, and then also read that module guide or introduction, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. then you've, you've got an awful lot of the basic information there. And if you can go to a face-to-face -face tutorial, yeah. go to a tutorial not to hear your tutor, who all OU tutors can model pure light with their bare hands. It's part of their initial probation <laughs> training. But it's not just to be in... Seriously, our tutors are subject experts, and it's an opportunity to spend time with a subject yeah. expert. But more importantly, it's a time to sit with another student and say, you know, I must be daft, I didn't understand page three, did you? And they say, no, I didn't as well. So you start to understand that you're not the only one struggling, and you can start building c collaborative study strategies of everybody's in it together, how can we address that? How did you get past that figure on page 15? I thought it meant that, did you? Yeah. And the other thing is, if your module doesn't have face-to-face -face tuition, those online tutorials are brilliant. Yes. Um, I, you know, all of my students from my group, I put my webcam on, they all know that the cats walk yeah, behind yeah, yeah, and, yeah. you know, they, it's a really good way of getting to know your tutor and yeah. your other students on your group. You know, it's, that, it's that whole peer thing that mm. I still say it now. My first tutorial, I will go in and say, who in this room thinks everybody knows something more than they do? Who in this room thinks that everybody's brighter than they am? And I feel the same. Yeah. I still feel that as a tutor after 20 yeah. years. Yeah. Actually meeting other people who are in the same position helps you to understand that you're not the only one who's nervous. Mm. They're not the only one who's concerned about the first assignment. You're not the only one who can't understand what an ICMA is or where to find things on the web page. And they're the people who, as you work through your degree, I'm still in touch with people I, I met in 1992 mm. on my first degree. They're the people who will form a support group that will help you to make it to the end. Mm. And that's really important. Let's take a quick tip to HJ and welcome Matty. Hi. How are you? Good, thank you. Good. So you've been thrown in at the deep end like many of our <laughs> students at home. And how are you getting on with them all? Yeah, they seem great. Yeah, we're having a good chat here and um, mm. talking about tutors. Yes, we're, a lot of us are just hearing from our tutors, whether it's by email or telephone. Uh, Guy who's having a telephone call with his tutor this evening is very looking forward to it. Um, Ingrid has... Uh, heard from uh, her tutor by email and is having a telephone call tomorrow morning so very excited again and uh, Joy enjoys speaking to her tutor, it's nice to have that introduction and a lot of us feel like once we've spoken to our tutor or got that email or emailed them back we feel like we've officially started. Uh, there are a couple um, or just a great question that I'd like to bring up, Carl um, doesn't really like social media and forums um will carl miss out if he decides that it's not for him or he doesn't want to join in in those parts i, I would say no um you know one of the beauties of ou study is that it's flexible and so that obviously there are compulsory elements so there's things like you need to do the tmas and the assignments and so on but so much of the other content is flexible so you know if you didn't want to attend tutorials face to face and they were available on your module, you wouldn't have to. Uh, you could watch an online alternative, a recording, say. If you didn't want to uh, actually type messages onto a forum, you can just read them. It's okay to just read them and observe them. Um, so I think that's, I, I would say, that yeah, it's I'm... important to only um, 
do the things that you want to do, aside from obviously the compulsory <laughs> but the, the um, things you feel comfortable with. Yeah. And I think that's the important part because it's about comfort. The module I work on, TM111, has some compulsory collaborative work that's assessed, but, but people can pass without doing it. And I have students on each presentation who say, I don't feel comfortable doing that. Is that OK? And it's absolutely fine. Yeah. We talk about it and, and we're all aware of what's happening. Um, but it's about comfort and it's also recognising that that comfort might change. So part way through, you might think, actually, I do feel comfortable now participating in an online forum or I do feel more comfortable about attending an online tutorial and perhaps saying something. So it's not fixed, but it's about approaching, reaching it at the stage at which you feel comfortable rather than feeling that you've got to do it. Mm. Or you might decide to watch Strictly Come Dancing instead, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is something else we've been talking about. We asked everyone at home how they're feeling about the prospect of a new module. The results are in, and 32% uh, say awesome, 68% said let's get going, no one says all right if I have to, no one says may, and no one says they're petrified. Um, we've got another poll, which we're going to show at the end of the session, about whether this was helpful. There's some fun answers there. You're going to have to go and look at that multi-choice question, uh, if you haven't already. Click on the option that applies, uh, and we'll tell you guys whether or not you've been successful in your task um, at the end of this session. So, we've covered tutorials, we've covered uh, the various ways in which tutors are and also the fact that they're individuals, they're not robots, they act in very different ways and that they give really personalised support. And we've talked a little bit about tutorials as well. Now assessment we've touched on really um, as something that can provoke a bit of anxiety for students and you mentioned before that we don't like this idea of being assessed. Um, but Finding that assessment is really important, not only the dates, but also the questions. So I'd like to turn to look at the module website now and highlight some of the important areas there, um, sort of leading on from that aspect of assessment. So we've got a picture um, of the welcome message on one of the module websites. We'll show you that in just a second. This is from TM111. There's a friendly welcome message there and lots of tabs along the top which are useful navigational tools. Yeah, we thought it was important to uh, highlight that, you know, the, all of our modules have got quite a consistent layout. Yeah. So you have things like assessment, tutorials, forums, resources and so on. So typically under resources you will find your study calendar that you yeah. can print out and stick on the fridge so everyone knows when you're going to have a TMA due. Um, I think the other one that we wanted to point out about was um, you see just underneath the subject uh, the module title yeah. and above welcome it says current weeks and all weeks yeah. And I often get queries from students that say, oh, I can only see the first three weeks. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. Why can't I see all of it? And I said, oh, click on all weeks and, and you'll see, see the, the whole module. There. And suddenly you see the, all of the... Um, all of the sort of content yeah. and that makes uh, makes quite a difference so that yeah so you can see now that that's gone on to week 19 week 20 and so on and you can tick them off as you go along which is always useful and then that bar yeah. will get progressively filled in under TM111 yeah. till it's all blue at the end isn't it nice to see that progress yeah. as you've been achieving um, through the module. Brilliant. Now the important things right now for students um, are looking at that assessment and also there was a tutorials tab and one of the great things that I love about uh, the OU tutorial system is that you can book onto a tutorial and then it shows you as well on that week that you're supposed to go to that tutorial so you don't forget and then you can just yeah. click on it and link and, and also it's handy for tutors if they email students beforehand for the online tutorials to maybe do a task or with some information they can then uh, be connected to that session. Yes, um, I mean, I'd, I'd always recommend people to book up, mm. um, but actually, if you haven't booked up, yeah. it's not the end of the world. You, you can just rock up, yeah, yeah, you can yeah. walk in, yeah. so that's fine as well. Yeah. But there's a lot of advantages, aren't there, to booking on because then if you somebody's can... got handouts, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. which I don't do because I'm a technologist, I don't do paper. <laughs> uh, but but it, if it just makes that it's helpful if you know how many people are going to be in the group because you can, might be preparing some workshops, some activities, where if I know I've only got two people coming, that will be different than if I know I've got ten people there. And the other thing that's really helpful is that um, if you've got any additional requirements, then the tutor, particularly if it's a cluster tutorial and it's not your individual tutor, um, if you've booked on there, the, then the tutor who's delivering the tutorial will be able to see what your additional requirements are and they will always look at that and adapt accordingly so that you can get the most out of the tutorial. I generally send an email at the beginning for the first tutorial telling people how they can, where to park. Simple things like where to find the rooms, where to find the um, 
at the, the study centre I go to, Canterbury Which Christchurch. Well, no, <laughs> Very important. I, I, yeah, I, see, I don't do everyone's that. Everyone's different. I, I know, I I know a biscuit. colleague who bakes for her students yeah, yeah. for a tutorial. I can't do that. No. My, one of my icebreakers at the start when I'm introducing, um, getting to know all of my students is what's your favourite biscuit? Because then I bring them along to the face to face. So it's all thought out. Oh, very it's, well prepared. I'm not that planned. I can't do <laughs> Uh, we do critical evaluations of biscuits, which involves sampling. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> how's everyone at home? We're doing really well. We've actually got some uh, a few great questions that have come up. Catherine wants to know, can you attend different tutorials other than the one from your assigned to, uh, tutor? Yes, of course. Yeah, so there'll, there'll be quite a combination. So sometimes... Um, tutorials are just for your tutor group. So they're quite small because it'll just be your for example, 20 or so students and your tutor. And that's a tutor group tutorial, so that's designed to just be quite a small event. Uh, and there might, there'll be lots of those because each tutor will be giving those. And then there'll be larger scale tutorials where you might have four or five tutors worth of students being invited along. Um, and then sometimes there's module-wide events as well. So. It's important to distinguish because what I think you're talking about there um, Vic, is the online tutorials. Yeah. Um, because uh, those are defined by who can access certain things. So if you don't That's have the right. link, you can't get in. Yeah. And they are very different. But I'm wondering if this is about face-to-face -face tutorials because sometimes you can think, oh, I'm going to London and maybe there's something on there. I get the opposite. My mm. tutorials are in Canterbury over Saturday lunchtime. Right. I get students that come out of London because yeah. they can then spend a day in Canterbury. Yeah. Yeah. Or their partner can go into Canterbury Town Centre and do <laughs> yeah. shopping Where and have a look I round. Where would I like to have a tutorial? Well, I have two hours of, of tutorial, and yeah. then I'll come and find you and we'll go and do lunch. I do, as part of one of my tutorials, I do a places to see in Canterbury. When you've yeah. finished here, yeah. don't jump in the car and go home. Go yeah. for a walk up the high street. Yeah. So tutorial tourism. Yes, <laughs> but the guys, the guys coming out of Camden, because it was easy for the train, why not? And it's also the opportunity to meet more students. Yeah, yeah. But it's worth always asking if it's possible to go to those, yeah. just so yes. that everyone can plan yeah. for it. Sometimes I've heard students who'll sort of look up and say, oh, I could travel within this sort of radius or something, yeah. where is it? And it might not be with their tutor. And, and sometimes I've had students who said, can I come to your tutorial? And it's really nice that they've invited me because sometimes they'll say, actually, I've got anxiety and could you send me the mm. slides first? Or they might say, I'm worried about the parking or mm -hmm. something like that. So it's always great to hear from them. But you can rock up to those as well yeah. uh, and also find ones that are suitable. So here's the question then. If you had to, say, have a Saturday afternoon and you could either go and see your tutor in Canterbury or a closer tutor uh, in Bristol, where might you then go? It depends on the subject. Yeah. If you want to go and see TM111, <laughs> I would come to Canterbury. But if you're going to go and do something sciencey, then I'd probably go to Chichester somewhere. So it Why? depends on the subject. <laughs> but you would say that, wouldn't you? Yeah, of course I would. I don't understand um, this at all. <laughs> I, think one of the th I think one of the things is um, I would always say if you can see your own tutor, mm. that is really beneficial because mm. it's your own tutor who will yeah. be marking your yeah. TMAs. Yeah. And that connection yeah. between the two of you is really important. So yeah. if you can help to establish that, yeah. that, that can be but, quite but beneficial. You can go to, we think, think of the first tutorial as, as tutorial one. You can go in, in the region that I look after, you can go to five tutorial ones. So you yeah. can go and meet five different tutors, yeah. including your own tutor, yeah. and there's an online variant as well. Go to yeah. all of them. Although yeah. you don't want to spend all your time travelling around to loads of different tutorials because you have actually got to do the work as well. Oh, you're a spoil sport now, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, Sarah says she's attended different tutorials with different tutors, and that's yeah. been great. I mean, when I was an OU student, I used to do that, actually. I would sort of say, because I was in London at the time, so I was like, well, what, what am I doing on a Tuesday night? Or actually, I haven't done my assignment, or I'm really freaking out now about it. And so I'd go to a tutorial with a different tutor. But I always found getting to know my tutor sort of quite useful, yeah. um, just because they were sort of marking my work and they knew if I was working on certain things or worried about certain yeah. things, then, <laughs> and, yeah. And they've got that ongoing relationship with mm. you as the module progresses. Yeah. It's yeah. about accent yeah. as well. Yeah. No, I'd, I'm conscious that my students in Kent won't recognise that I'm not from Kent. If I've heard somebody's accent, I can yeah. read their writing like and speak, I can yeah. hear exactly yeah. that. 
And so if I've heard, if I've had a chat with a student, I know a little bit more about yeah. them and I can yeah. read their, their work yeah. with that accent. And equally, my students need to know my yeah. accent yeah. in my writing. Trust yeah. me on that one, Vic. Trust me. Now, one thing people are sort of saying at the moment is, you know, we've, we've mentioned a lot of acronyms and a lot of things. A lot of them are our OU things, like mm. clusters and, you know, TMAs. And whilst that can be increasingly familiar, sometimes if you're feeling anxious anyway, it can feel a bit overwhelming to know whether or not I'm going to the right thing. If you can't go to it, you're not going to be able to go to it, Absolutely. aren't you? You should just go for it yes. and do everything. Things, sign up for the things you can and not worry too much you, about what it's called. if you find called. that you're at the wrong thing, nobody's going to laugh at you or throw you out. Mm. I've had students that were going to do an arts course, they'd, they'd wrong, turned up in the wrong room. Mm. I'm going to throw them out, come and enjoy it. But generally, certainly on, on the modules I work on, if you can see it and access it, you can go to it. Mm. 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 And I think that, you know, it, it, if you're worried about the acronyms and so on, just drop an email to your tutor. Yeah. They'll tell you what it means. Yeah. So, and you every know, now and again, your tutor just a quick will then, query. Yeah. Your tutor will then find somebody else to ask because they don't yeah. know the answer either. Mm. Brilliant. OK. Let me just see if there are any over-burning uh, questions. HJ. Yeah, there was a fantastic question that Maddie has. Yes. Yeah, so we had a question come in, which is a really good question. If you book to attend a tutorial, but then you can't make it for some reason, what, what happens then? Um, oh, well, if it were you, <laughs> what would you do, Vic? <laughs> it's fine. If you can't, life happens, things get in the way, you know, so uh, there's an option to say, well, either click the option to say you can't attend anymore or just drop your tutor an email. And then or just do nothing and not turn up. No-one's going to do a register and no. say, why didn't um, you come? We yeah, do do a register, but we don't worry if somebody hasn't been able to make it. Yeah, it, it won't be the end of the world, you know, it, it's fine. No. The register, signing up for it is more for the students' benefit than anything else because it just helps them to be reminded of it. If they can't actually turn up, it's it's not the end of the world. Especially if an emergency happens. The last thing you need to do is worry about a tick box. Yes. Yeah, and nobody, no, you know, you're not going to get drop any scores for it. No. It's not going to impact on your Because real life gets in the way. Yeah. And you know, we all have, there are times where... We make it, you know, we try to do something, we can't do it for whatever reason. Nobody gets upset. Mm. Great, and we've got one more question time for. Yes, uh, one question uh, from Catherine. She just wants to know, do you need any specific equipment to attend an online tutorial? Ah, oh, good question. So it's entirely possible to sit in an online tutorial and not, um, not speak um, at all. You could just do the text chat. Um, that would be fine. However, I think you get much more out of it if you do have a headset because then you can chip in with questions, you can respond to your tutor. Um, I, I think it, it's, it, it's more beneficial if you can have, um, have a headset. It's great to be able to hear, especially yeah. when the voice is so important in the online yeah. tutorials. But I know students who, um, who, who just log in on a mobile phone or an exactly iPad. That. Fine. Exactly yeah. that. Exactly On the I bus would, even. I think I would rather have students coming to the tutorial live yeah. without a headset yeah. than not yeah. bothering at all yeah. and just watching the recording. Yeah. No, or, absolutely. You know. And the other thing that I think that's important to notice is that no one can hear what's going on in your house. Yeah. So even if the cat's jumping on the keyboard and the children are screaming and all yeah. chaos is going on, you can log on to a tutorial. No one's going to hear unless you turn a microphone on if it's available. Um, and you can just sort of drop in and out as you want to, but it's better to turn up for some yeah. of it, if not all. And even if you have got your microphone on, mm -hmm. and as has happened to me, yeah. someone's child has yeah. walked in and said, Mum, when's tea? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine, yeah. you know. We're all doing it. <laughs> it's we're absolutely all doing it. okay. You can have an ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant, excellent. Well, thank you so much. Um, HJ and Maddie, is that all the questions that we've had for now? Uh, I think we're happy with all the questions Great. and we're just really excited and ready to go on. OK, so yes. we're going to have the results of our poll now about whether or not this was helpful. And this determines whether or not you can have a piece of cake after the session. <laughs> so uh, we'd like to know uh, whether or not you found this helpful. The options were, it's changed my life, really helpful tips, so-so. That's 25 minutes I won't ever get back. And where is the complaint form? So let's see what people at home had to say. Oh, well oh. done. Everyone likes you. Some really like helpful everybody. tips. So I think that's, that's realistic and, and honest. Um, and very well done. Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. <laughs> and 5% of people say their life has changed, so uh, <laughs> it's probably your students. <laughs> that's, that's my questionnaire from yeah. Adobe Connect. Really? Yeah. Ah.
brilliant okay lovely excellent well thank you very much um that's been a really useful session next we're going to look at uh, what students wish they knew before they started studying from an academic perspective um and we're going to be finding out a little bit about uh, the open stem labs so before that next session we're going to show you a video about the open stem labs and i'll be back for our next session in five minutes